A forearm shaft fracture, AO classification 22C1, will be repaired with two 3.5 LCPs, an 8-hole and an 11-hole plate. The radius has a simple fracture, while the ulna fracture pattern is complex. The simple radius fracture is to be stabilized in the conventional way, with an 8-hole 3.5 LCP applied as a compression plate with an interfragmentary lag screw, providing absolute stability. The complex ulna fracture will be repaired with an 11-hole 3.5 LCP used as a bridging plate. The procedure follows the principles of the internal fixator and provides relative stability. The combination holes allow the same plate to be used for different techniques. For the conventional technique, Standard 3.5 mm cortex screws will be inserted in the dynamic compression part of the hole. Wide angulation of the screws is possible. For the bridging technique, bicortical self-tapping locking head screws will be inserted into the threaded part of the plate holes to provide angular stability. To apply the LCP to the radius in the conventional way, the following instruments are used. The 2.5 and 3.5 millimeter drill bits, the 3.5 universal drill guide, the 3.5 2.5 double drill guide, the depth gauge, the 3.5 millimeter tap and handle, and the small hexagonal screwdriver with holding sleeve. The eccentric and neutral pre-drilling for the standard screws has to be carried out with the universal drill guide. To pre-drill eccentrically, the universal drill guide is placed at the edge of the dynamic compression portion of the combination hole. To pre-drill in the neutral position, the universal drill guide is pressed into the hole revealing the telescopic inner sleeve. To apply axial compression, the first screw must be placed close to the obtuse angle of the oblique fracture. When driving home the eccentrically inserted screw in the opposite fragment, the fracture will be compressed and held in place. However, if the first screw is placed in the fragment with the acute angle, the insertion of the eccentric screw will cause the fragment to glide along the oblique fracture line and be displaced. To expose the two fractures, separate incisions, one for the ulna and one for the radius, are preferred. A single incision would need too much dissection. The radius is slightly curved, so the plate must be contoured. The bending template helps to obtain the correct curvature. Choosing an 8-hole LCP requires that the appropriate plate hole already be selected for the interfragmentary lag screw that will be inserted across the oblique fracture. Three holes will lie over the proximal fragment and four over the distal fragment. One hole is left free for the lag screw. The first screw hole is proximal to the fracture and close to the obtuse angle. It is drilled neutrally with the 2.5 mm drill bit through the universal drill guide. The screw length is measured with the depth gauge. The thread is cut with the 3.5 mm tap and the appropriate sleeve. The plate is fixed with the first 3.5 mm cortex screw. In the distal fragment, a second hole is drilled close to the fracture using the universal drill guide in the compression mode to place the screw eccentrically into the plate hole. To do so, the telescopic sleeve of the guide may not be pressed onto the bone. Instead, the sleeve is only held against the smooth end of the DC plate hole. The depth is measured and the thread is cut.
the appropriate length 3.5 mm screw is inserted. By driving the screw home, axial compression is created. The first screw is now checked for tightness. To improve interfragmentary compression across the fracture gap, an oblique lag screw is used. First, only the glide hole in the near cortex is drilled with the 3.5 mm drill bit centered with the drill sleeve in the DC hole. The 2.5 drill sleeve is inserted into the glide hole and a 2.5 mm thread hole is drilled in the far cortex. The length is measured. A 3.5 mm thread is cut in the far cortex only. The 3.5 mm cortex screw is inserted. By tightening this screw, optimal compression of this simple oblique fracture is obtained, providing absolute stability. To supplement this fixation, another 3.5 mm cortex screw is added at either end of the plate. The five screws should provide sufficient stability in normal bone, although in the case of poor bone, all the plate holes, apart from the hole over the fracture, should be filled. The next step is the stabilization of the complex fracture of the ulna using the bridging internal fixator technique with an 11-hole 3.5 LCP. The following instruments are needed. The toothed reduction forceps, the 2.8 millimeter LCP drill bit, two LCP drill sleeves, the depth gauge, the screwdriver shaft with the 1.5 Newton meter torque limiter and its handle. Because of the intermuscular membrane between the radius and the ulna, an approximate reduction of the length and the alignment of the ulna will have taken place during the fixation of the simpler radius fracture. As a rule, the plate does not have to be contoured to the straight shaft of the ulna. In the exercise, the plate is fixed to the distal main fragment with reduction forceps. In a clinical environment, the plate may be inserted subcutaneously with the help of the LCP drill sleeve leaving the fracture area unexposed. Bicortical locking head screws are inserted into the end holes of the plate. These two screws still allow limited correction of the axial alignment, but no correction of the length or rotation. The threaded drill guide is carefully inserted into the corresponding part of the combination hole. A hole is drilled using the 2.8 mm drill bit. After removing the drill sleeve, the length is measured. Locking head screws are best inserted with the torque limiting screwdriver attached to the power drive. However, the last few turns must be made by hand to prevent over tightening the screws in the plate holes. At this point, if the other end of the plate is not well secured, the helicopter effect may occur. Before completely tightening the first screw, the plate is fixed to the bone using the most distal plate hole in the same manner.
This screw may be fully tightened, which is signaled by a click. The first screw is now fully tightened, again until a click is heard. Two more bicortical locking head screws are inserted close to the fracture area in the same manner as before, with two screws in each fragment, leaving one hole empty between the two. Adequate stability to bridge the complex fracture is obtained. This exercise has illustrated how the LCP can be applied in two different ways. First, as a conventional compression plate for the simple fracture of the radius, and then as a purely internal fixator to bridge the complex fracture of the ulna. The radiographs of the model show the result of the procedure.